advent of code 2024 day five print queue uh they hit me right at the i hate printers so much oh man all right so let's check out the basically i'm going to get input that has two sections uh with an the empty line dividing them the first is a set of rules and this just says that page 47 has to come before page 53 not directly before but somewhere before uh, 97 comes 413 97 comes 461 etc and then i have a set of print key jobs and basically i just need to say like oh 75 it, is this correctly ordered and if it's you know correctly ordered basically means 75 has to come before 13 well 13 is not in here 75 has to come before 47 it does so but if there might be some examples where there's a there's a rule broken um i think it said the fourth one has a rule broken uh let's see correctly ordered uh, 53 is correct. Anyway, these are the rules. For, these are the rules, and these are the things to check. And then I need to find the valid ones. And so, and then I need to take the middle value from the value, valid ones, sum it up, and get my result. Uh, let's go ahead and grab this right here. And we'll jump over to code. Uh, I will use my Genday script. I will put a link to my video, introduction video describing that. Um, day five. Um, I did just update it. I was playing around with day four yesterday um, after I did the video. I might show that actually at the end of this video. Um, and uh, I updated it to include, let's see, includes, well, I'll show you here, um, just stripping new lines from the end of the lines because I almost always want that. Um, so anyway, we can, we can talk about that for day four. Um, let's go ahead for day five here. I'm going to create an ex.txt and paste in my example text. Um, we can also check out the input text, and it looks a lot like the example text, except there's a lot more of it. Uh, let's see how many. Keep scrolling down. Looks like we have over a thousand, so eleven hundred and seventy-six uh, ordering rules, and then you know a hundred or so uh, things, and they all look they're not too long. It's not. It's not like there's nothing. that's like a thousand long. Um, looks like maybe like twenty long. So. Um, we're going to probably have to do a double loop and that that's okay. Um, okay. So I just said, I made these changes to the input. I'm actually going to go back and we're going to change this entirely. Cause I actually don't, I want F dot read here. Uh, and then we can say rules comma, uh, jobs equals, uh, that can be lines. This will use data and we can say data dot split on double new line. And then we can say rules equals rules dot split. I think split lines works. Yep. Split lines. And now we'll have all the rules. Um, for each line, we want to actually parse it into a couple integers. So we can say map int onto uh, rules dot split. Let's see. No, that's not quite right. Rules dot split lines is going to give us a bunch of, oh yeah, that'll work. So pull up our input here. Let's open to the side. Rules that split lines is going to give us a bunch of these things. So we need to then split each one of those. Let's see. Um, the rules that split line will give us a bunch of lines, but we want to actually get like um, then each of those. So we want to, uh, let's say L for L in. So that would be each line. And for each line, we're going to dot split on a pipe. And then we will map int onto that and we need to need to create map returns a generator so we need to put it into something and i'll just make it a tuple so now we'll get a list of tuples that is uh these numbers 61 32 19 74 etc uh, let's just run that and make sure that works as we expect uh example.txt and i should pull the example up on the side uh 4753 yeah so that works um if we look at jobs here we have the jobs. Um, we probably want to do something similar with the jobs. So we'll say uh, jobs equals jobs dot split lines. So we're going to do each jobs. And then each job we want to do, we want to do basically the same thing. Um, in fact, we want to do exactly the same thing. So we'll do tup, uh, tuple map int l dot split on this time on comma for l in there. Does that look about right? Uh, map is missing. Closes there. I think that's right. Let's check, give it a check. Cool. So now each job is just a list of integers or a tuple of integers as well. So that gives us what we need to actually parse over the jobs. All right. So part one, um, what do we need to do here? 
Uh, we'll start with part one equals zero because we're going to count things again. And this time we need to loop over each job and check if it's valid. So, um, for job in jobs, and how are we going to check that? Well, we're, we're going to have to basically take each number and check and see the numbers after it. And so to do that, I'm, I'm going to create, I'm going to do a little pre-processing. Um, what is the best way to store this? Uh, we will say uh, in, we're, I'm going to use a default dict, I think. So from collections import default dict, and then we can say invalid uh, uh, rules map equals default dict. Um, and if it's not, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to store if this is valid or not based on the pair ordering. And if it's not in there, then it's valid because there's no rule saying it's not valid. Um, so we want to say default dict, um, and we're going to store, uh, I guess it'd be the default dict. And can I say default dict and then true? Is that possible? Let's, let's see. Python from collections import default dict. Uh, x equals default dict of true. Does this work? No, it must be a call or none. So I guess I can say bool, but then if I say x of anything, zero, I get false. Okay, so we'll just store invalid rules here. Um, so rules map, default dict, bool. And so then we can say uh, for rule in uh, a, uh, x comma y in rules so if we're going to loop over that thing and we'll say rules map of x comma y so that means um false to us means it's it's in it's or we're saying this is incorrectly ordered is true so if it's x comma y if it's that if it's good then, then it's going to be false and we're going to say rules map of y comma x equals true so now we have a way to get a Boolean back um, for what's invalid. In fact, we don't even need to put the X comma Y in here because we have a default dict and it's gonna return false anyway. So we just need to put in this it equals true. And so this is going to be, um, maybe I should rename this, uh, rename invalid map. But now I have invalid map is what, what checking for if it's invalid. Okay, so now for each job, I've got a job. So I can say four, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to do I, we're gonna have to loop over this by number. Um, so we'll say for i in i slash, let's see, um, yeah, in range, uh, and the range is going to be len job. And we'll say for j in range len, and this will be len of job from i onwards. And really we need i plus one onwards. And so now we're going to take, we're going to say, uh, if we're going to take for each I, we're going to look at, so for the 75, we're going to compare it to each of these other things. And really, so we're going to say, um, if invalid map I comma J. So if that's true, that means it's invalid. So we need to break out of here. So in fact, because we're doing all these nested loops, we probably are going to want to function here. Um, let's do def check a job. And we will take a job and we will now pull all of this up here. Oops, there we go. Uh, if the invalid map, so if this comes back, so if i and j is in our invalid map, it's not allowed then we're going to turn zero. And if we get through the whole loop and we've checked, so we've checked this versus 75 versus each of these, then we check 47 versus each of these and set it all the way through and we get through and there's nothing good there, then we can return. Uh, we need to get the middle value. We could return true, we could check. We could do like an if here. That, maybe that's what we should do. Well, now let's return the value. Um, the middle value, uh, let's say it's five long. So that means it's zero, one, two, three, and four. So we want the value two, the index two. 5 divided by 2, I, you know, we can do 5 divided by 2, and that'll give us... So I think we just need to do simply uh, job of len job divided by 2. And now, down here, for job and job, 
part one plus equals check job of job. It could be done. Let's see. Uh, 278. I don't have any recollection of what the actual result we're looking for is. Uh, middle number 143. So that is not correct. Um, let's come down here and we can do print job. Let's see how many we're printing. Let's see how many we're doing here. Uh, we are doing all of them. So that's no good. Um, which ones are we supposed to be failing on? Uh, we're supposed to get 61, 53, and 29. 61, 53. So we're supposed to get the first three good and the next the rest of them not. Um, what is the best way to check this? Uh, I'm going to put a break here and I'm going to F5. Now I've got, I've done debugging before. Um, so I've got a video that shows how I set this up and I go over it in the intro as well. Um, so here we should be fine. We expect to be fine. We expect to be fine. Uh, now I'm going to put the break up here because we've done the three expects. So now we're in the job four. This one should fail. If I remember correctly, let's see, why does this one fail? Uh, 70, uh, uh, uh. Let's see, uh, the fourth update is not in order because it would print 75 before 97. So let's see, we can come here and do uh, invalid map 7597. That is true. Um, so let's see, where do we print that? So that's our first one. Okay, cool. So we should say, oh, we're not doing IJ. I'm should be doing, um, there's, there we go. Found it. Okay. So this will be job sub I job sub J like that. Uh, now when I do that job sub I job sub J is was J. Um, oh, because this is also set up very poorly. Um, this would be from I plus one to len job. As, that was just set up poorly. So basically, I want to go from I plus one to the length of job. Um, so let's start this over. In fact, I could probably run. Let's stop for a second. Come back here and just try and run it again. See if we get the right result. We get the right result. Um, so. That was two errors there. Um, the first was in my J setup, I did turn it hastily. And the second was I was checking the I and the J and not the values of the I, the job values at those indexes. Um, and we got the right answer. So let's see if we get it for uh, input.txt. Uh, 4281. Sweet. All right. Um, let me read part two. All right, for part two, I need to look only at the in the incorrectly ordered ones, and I need to fix the order. And then once I fix the order, I get the middle value and I sum up the, the fixed middle values of the incorrect ones. Um, so, all right. Uh, first, we're going to refactor this a little bit because we, we did all this check job in one thing. Um, I'm going to go ahead and let's see, we'll make this list of int. Ooh, and we will return a bool. So we're going to turn here, false. And we're going to grab this and return true. So we're just gonna have this check valid. We're not gonna worry about adding. Then we can say if check job part one plus equals that. So we've effectively, let's see, uh, Python day uh, example 143, that looks right, and input, that looks right. Okay, so we, we just refactored, we didn't change anything, but what this allows us to do is now we can say else, now we have an invalid job, uh, part two plus equals um let's see but we can delete this we can do part two equal equals zero um let's see we're gonna need fixed job equals sorted job and we can say uh fixed job when fixed job divided by two so we'll look just like this, um, except for the sorted function is not doing what we want right now. Right now it's just going to sort it numerically, and that's not it. Um, so we need to write a custom sorting function. Uh, and to do that, um, I, had, I had to ask ChatGPT while I was reading, and I, I said, basically, I'd like to write a custom function to handle sorting. It takes two values and returns something that says whether it's, which is larger. And it gave me this answer right here, which is exactly what I needed. Um, we're going to use com comp to key from func tools. We're going to write a function that returns uh, if a is bigger, it returns, if a is less than b, it returns negative one. Basically, I think it's like a minus b, like 
a if a was three and b was seven subtract a minus b we would get you a negative number so we return negative if a is greater we return one and otherwise we return zero and then we pass that into the sorted function here to get the sorted results and that, that's exactly what we need so we will come up here and we'll do from func tools import comp to key and then down here we can say sorted job equals let's see we'll come here and we'll say def sort job uh, a which is an int b which is an int and this is going to return an int as for now uh, and then down here we're going to say comma key equals comp to key sort job uh, sort job like that okay so everything here looks right except for we need to do a handle our sort um, and we have all we need to do that right now because we already have this invalid map so basically what we're going to say is uh, if invalid map of a comma b so if a and a then b is in the invalid map then these are incorrectly sorted going low to high so we want to return one i think that's right if it doesn't work we're going to switch this to negative one uh, else return uh, i guess we want to do the else because we were returned return negative one um is that right that might be backwards we're going to do it by uh test here um, that is correct i i believe let's go check the uh where's chrome here we go 123 is the correct answer so that looks like we did it right um 5466 no idea about that let's go check it fingers crossed boom all right so that's that that was fun um i enjoyed i don't quite understand why we need i would have my gut would have told you that i could have just written this function and set it to the key but i for some reason we need this comp to key not 100 sure why um, but ChatGPT did me a solid here, um, and uh, it worked out. I almost forgot that I said I would come back and look at day four real quick. Um, I'm, so I'll have a little. I'll put a link to the day four um, up here in the little thingy. Um, but uh, just real quick, I wanted to show this. Um, so for part two, we were looking for. We had this word search um, where we're looking across here for an A, where like it's hard to show, but yeah, the pattern we were looking for was. Uh, Something like uh, M, M, whoa, didn't know. A, nope, stop autofilling me. S, and S, like that. Um, so basically, the pattern we're looking for is an X made of the word mass twice with an A in the middle. And we had to count how many of those there were. And so uh, my solution, the, um, maybe I can get, I don't want to change this at all. Well, I don't think it matters if I added a new line. Okay. My solution was down here in the video to get all of my places where I have an A and then check, basically um, check for the four possible patterns. Cause there's different, you could have M, you could have different ways that the M they were arranged. Um, and uh, in looking at other videos, especially uh, I was like hyper neutrino, someone I always look at after I solve to figure out uh, if I, if they're great, but there's, there's lots of uh, options there. Um, a much slicker way to do this would be rather than trying to check each solution with this a, a really bloated if would just be to get the four corner values um and then as a string and then check the four possible options um and because we're going around basically i'm going upper left upper right down right down left um and we know it can't the m's can't be across from each other because that, that would be ma'am and sats um so we just know it has to be mmss or M, S, S, M, et cetera. And so basically I have these four possible options for the corners. And so I can just grab those and get them. Um, and this solves the exact same as my original solution, but it certainly, if you look at the amount of code here, it looks like a better. better. So um, I put this in the GitHub. It looks just like this now, or GitLab, wherever my stuff is. Um, and you can see both. So um, just wanted to give a quick overview on that. Uh, if you've stayed this long in the video, you probably are interested. So uh, thanks for hanging out with me today and I will be back tomorrow.